Okay, Rick, it's all yours. All right, Chief. Um, I would like to call to order the meeting of the uh, Shoreward Police Commission, calling it to order at 6.03, Wednesday, March 8th. Um, Chief, it's my understanding the recording is being made at the moment. The recording is being made, correct. All right, there is some technical difficulties, which has Commissioner Anderson appearing by telephone. Um, using Teams, uh, that, is, that is distracting. Bunch of, I knew the her, but it's coming out and all. Yeah, it's going to be an interesting one to do. All right. All right. Hey, and actually, hey, hey, Jennifer, can you can you mute, mute your phone? Okay. There, go. there we go. Excellent. Good work. All right. So we call the order. I, we have Commissioner uh, Commissioner McKnight, Commissioner Bullock, Commissioner myself, Commissioner Cole, myself in in the uh, office now. Commissioner uh, Commissioner Anderson has been given permission, given her circumstances, to appear remotely. We have four out of five, so we do meet quorum. Calling the meeting to order. The first order of business is considering the approval from August twenty fifth of 2025 meeting minutes. Uh, Rick, I also just want to acknowledge that the meeting has been properly published in accordance with state law. Ah, there we go. Thank you very much. Yes. Uh, was it posted at the usual places in town? Yes. Right. It was okay. posted online. It was posted here in the Village Hall at the Police Department and in the library. Thank you very much, Chief. All right. Taking a look at the meeting minutes from August 25th of 2022. Um, do those, well, I'd be looking for a motion for anybody who's taking a look at those particular meeting minutes. Mm -hmm. I, I'll make a motion to approve the meeting minutes from August 25th of 2022. Second that motion. All right, we have a motion to approve the meeting minutes from August 25th of 2022. From uh, Commissioner Bullock, seconded by Commissioner McKnight. Um, given the circumstances here in the committee in the committee room, I would call the roll. Uh, Commissioner McKnight. Aye. Commissioner Bullock. Aye. Commissioner Anderson, if you want to unmove. Aye. All right, and then I myself, uh, President Cole, also says aye. So the minutes are approved. So that order of business is, is done. Now, we're at the point in our meeting with uh, technical particular issues where um, because the next order of business is to convene into closed session in accordance with section 1985, sub 1 sub C of the Wisconsin state statutes to consider issues of employment. Our topics will be discussing the current eligibility list for a police officer position and sub B to discuss hiring process of police officers. I would be looking for a motion to move into closed session. I move to go into closed session. I, I second that. All right, we have a moving to go into closed session from Commissioner McKnight and a second from Commissioner Bullock. Um, on that vote, um, Commissioner McKnight, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Bullock, how do you vote? Aye. Commissioner Anderson, how do you vote? Aye. And then I myself, uh, Commissioner Cole, would also vote, vote aye. So at 6.08, we will go into closed session. The process using Teams for the recording would be to Mute the microphone and mute the video in case anyone else decides to join from the public as would be appropriate, but we're in closed session and then we will continue our discussion in closed session. The meeting will remain open, but unvisible until we decide to move out of closed session. As noted, I am now going to, uh, to uh, disable the camera and disable the microphone to go into closed session. Thank you, Chief.
go. Okay, we are back in open session. Uh, Commissioner Cole. Okay. All right. Um, moving back in open session, we've just convened in closed session and uh, we are reconvening back in open session. Closed session was in accordance with section 19.85 of the Wisconsin statutes. Uh, to put on the record, um, two things. One, we we have been having some te technical difficulties with Teams, which is why for the closed session we use Zoom. Uh, for anybody watching the recording, Commissioner Moore and Commissioner Anderson, because of their personal circumstances, did have permission to appear remotely. They are appearing through the uh, laptop on the table in front of me through Zoom. Um, now, in preference to our motion that is made regarding what we discussed in closed session, current the current list for eligibility list for hiring of the Shored police officer is now vacant. There are no applicants left. They have uh, either gone to other agencies or removed. Because of that, we need to open another process for creating an eligibility list for anticipated openings. The motion I would make is I would make a motion to approve a hiring process to create an eligibility list for anticipated vacancies occurring in the next year. And I would move that that list sunset in a period of one year, Chief, would that meet the would that meet your agency's needs? Or would you or, or would it or would we want it to not sunset? One year should be sufficient. OK, and we can address that if, if we need to at a different point. So I will restate that motion since I uh, added that. All right, I would I would be uh, moving to approve a hiring process to create an eligibility list for anticipated vacancies for police officer in the village of Shorewood. I would ask that that eligibility list, I would move to that eligibility list expire in a period of one year from today's date. Do I have a second? I'm sorry. Um, from today's date, can we? Um, higher date? Yeah, from <laughs> higher date or or they, would it would it would we be better off not having a sunset time period and removing that and just having an eligibility list that when it becomes an issue it could be sunset at some point? Sure. All right. I would. I, I'm going to. Okay. Then you're 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 we're boxing ourselves in unnecessarily to a time frame. Okay. Does that make sense? It 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 does it does make sense. Or you could make it the sunset for two years instead of one year. You know, that's that's something to think about too. Yeah, if we're at, if we're in the discussion period for that, that's not a bad idea either. Because um from a sunset time period. I'll tell you what, since the motion, since the motion's out there and I haven't heard a second, I will withdraw the motion and all and let's have a discussion about how how we should actually we would want to proceed. So from a discussion standpoint, Mr. Moore, you make a you make a pretty good point. Uh, you do think that it, we would be better off not having a sunset period. Um, uh, Commissioner McKnight, do you have any feelings either way? So we have we will anticipate two open positions, right? So we need to create a list for those two positions. Would it make sense to say that um, we create the eligibility list um, without a sunset date? Um, I don't want to say pending like when there are open positions again, like to revisit it when there are open positions again. I don't know how that would be worded necessarily, but. 
<laughs> because you know you're not going to need to revisit the list unless you need to hire people, right? Right, but you don't. I mean, that's an open letter right there. You don't know who's going to quit. You don't know who's going to move, right? Um, so, and then you always want to come back and re reapproach because that list will dwindle down anyway, right? We will co create something that has four people on it, and the next thing you know, three people get hired, and if it's just plain open, then we still need to come back and have another meeting about having more people put on the list, right? So, I mean, what, what's your opinion about that? Yeah, I think my opinion is I mean, we're not going to hire the second position until the start of the new year. So, and who knows? Yeah, I mean, to not have a sunset date or two years, as you originally mentioned. But I, I guess I like the idea of no sunset. Of yeah. no sunset. Okay. Right. Yeah. The 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 one question I have is I know it was. Yeah. The the one one question I do have though. Is, it doesn't, you know, at the discretion of the department. Okay. The, uh, the one question, I, the one question I just want to kick it around is that can a list get stale and can circumstances with different applicants change once they're on an eligibility list and they've been approved by us to be hired? So once somebody's on an eligibility list and they've been approved to us be hired in six months, nine months, one year, et cetera, goes by, and that candidate's circumstances have changed. Maybe they've gotten some sort of trouble that isn't necessarily statutorily disqualifiable, but it is necessarily not somebody we would anticipate hiring given a change in circumstance. Um, what's the process to remove them from a list like that? Or would it be administratively in the police department where there's a decision where now, because circumstances have changed, we don't want this individual anymore? I think it would be that, that we would make that internal decision and then come before the commission um, in close session to explain why that individual um, would be uh, essentially be removed from the eligibility list for cause. Okay. I, I just as and I and I as I'm thinking out loud, it was just, you know, we're better off to still point. So so from the standpoint, Chief, especially if there's a, a budgetary question where you're not quite sure when the village is going to authorize this, the the hiring of the potential second position, it does seem to make sense to not have a sunset time period. I, I am and I, I understand that now we can change that particular motion if that makes sense. Makes a good point. I didn't hear that. <laughs> <laughs> okay, but well, actually, actually, yeah. Uh, as guests at our meeting, Chief Worth and Captain Robleski. Robleski. Mm. All right, you can mess up coal anytime you want. <laughs> if if you don't mind, that's it. That's that's actually a pretty good opinion. If you don't mind articulating, so we can all hear it. So we can all hear it. For so my opinion of the matter is that we. The, the list should be adopt the the expiration date should be in conjunction with the adoption of the list date. So that would be today, whatever day the list gets approved, is it would be from that date. Okay. Um, my opinion is that we should probably do like a two year um list for the simple fact that if we say we run a list of 25 people and now we are hiring and now we're down into the 19s and 20s. By the time that rolls around, do we really want to be hiring from the bottom of our eligibility list? Or do we now think that as we approach two years, the list expires, we might be able to get new, fresh, more qualified people applying in. And if those people are still interested, they can reapply and try and do better on the list. So now we're picking the cream of the crop off the list versus the bottom of the list. Because if it never sunsets, then you're out, you're, you're getting the people that actually didn't do all that well. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so if you don't mind, give me one quick second. I'm going to try to wordsmith an appropriate motion. 
because I think you well, make a very good point. Before you go any further, um, Bernie and Jennifer, did you hear all that? Yes, I did. Okay, I yes. And do you have any opinion about that? I, like I said, my opinion is pretty much already stated. I think it's always good to leave it open ended just mm -hmm. because it does give the chief and wiggle room. You know, like there are going to be you know, things unforeseen that we haven't thought out that are going to pop up. Like Rick is saying, people who don't qualify anymore, mm -hmm. the, the list can get stale. Um, they're just, I always, I'm just the big believer in giving yourself a little, a little wiggle room, some out in case things don't, don't go the way we want them to go. So I don't think two years is bad though. So if we're going to compromise, I think that's pretty reasonable. Yeah. And it seems like it, you know, his points were real well thought out. So I'm okay with that too. Okay. okay. And Jennifer? I feel like having a sunset is safe work down the road but there's yeah. an argument to be made for two years then i'm fine with that too it feels it just i don't i don't really fully understand what we're arguing about it seems like it's we could make a change on a case-by-case -case basis if we had to but right now i feel like putting restrictions on it is kind of pointless and past time for the whole process well you know what i i think the the point that um the your captains made was that you know if, if it's a pretty long list let's just say there's six people up there those are the six people that you have to look at right when we're hiring so let's just say we get down to the point and five of them have gotten hired and the sixth one it's a person that we really didn't want in the first place but they're left on the list so if the list is unlimited we're, we're picking from the bottom of the cream and not the top. So. I mean, can't we adjust that at the time then? I it, mean, we're not going to go ahead and, work and hire somebody because they're on a list. But then we're aiming at a specific, but then we're aiming at a specific candidate and then we may have to come up with reasons why we don't like that particular candidate. And with a list that has had no sunset time period, that candidate it it, be, it can it can start to look like specifically based versus what the captain much more articulately said than I did, which is after a time period's gone by, your your list is getting a, is getting a little stale, and there may be newer candidates in the in that that would be available. I thought that was embedded in the process, and that's what you it, it it actually really isn't. We've kind of. It would be a living document that we would add, add candidates to as they came along. No, it's no. not. Yeah, no, it's it it's not. And yeah, but I mean, I mean, real quick. I think we just put this. Last one. You know, like whether it's two years, one year that if no contact within this much, you have. Or something. I mean, it's pretty easy to. Pretty easy. Okay, I, I I'll tell you what. Let me articulate kind of what I got my head wrapped around, and we'll see if it meets everybody's uh, everybody's approval. So I would move to approve a hiring process to create an eligibility list for Shorewood police officer for anticipated vacancies to occur. I would add that this list sunset upon two years after approval for hiring by the village board. I think that sounds like that would meet the needs for everything. Hi. <laughs> All right, to uh, to get to uh, start the vote, uh, any more discussion? No. no. All right, to start to uh, to start the roll, Commissioner Moore, what was that? What was your vote, Commissioner Moore? Oh, okay. Second. Okay, there we go. So, Commissioner Moore seconds the motion. Now we'll now we'll take the uh, take the vote. Um, Commissioner Moore, what's your vote? Following the process, Commissioner Moore, Aye. what's your vote? Aye. Okay. Commissioner Anderson, what's your vote? Aye. 
Commissioner Anderson votes aye. Commissioner uh, McKnight, what's your vote? All right, Commissioner Bullock, what's your vote? Aye. Um, and then I, uh, Commissioner Cole, vote aye as well. Motion carries uh, unanimously. And that motion to approve a hiring process to create an eligibility list for the anticipated for police Sherwood police officer for the anticipated vacancies to occur. The list is to sunset upon two years of approval of the list by the village board. All right, that was our uh, essentially our only our only uh, motion on the agenda. Um, is there any other member of the Sherwood Police Commission that has anything anything else that they would like to be, bring to the attention of the uh, police commission? I have something I want to bring the commissioner's attention to. So. Get your hankies out because I got to retire from the commission. I um, just sold my home in Shorewood and I have to be living permanently in my fish bank. Too bad. I thought she was going to say Savannah. Yeah, I thought so too. <laughs> Such a bummer. Who's going to buy me the first old mansion? Uh, I'll do it. Uh, okay. Amen, Barney. All right, when I get back in town, we'll. Uh, I got we'll get you. together at camp and you guys can all buy me an old fashioned suite. Okay. Okay. That's a deal. Uh, all right. It's uh, been an absolute pleasure, Jennifer. Oh, thanks, man. This, uh, it's the uh, highlight of my career as a commissioner. Get you hired. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, thank you so much. That's so kind of you to say. <laughs> all right. So um, then. At, at this point, uh, there'll be an opening on the Shore Police Commission. I will advise uh, President McCaig that there will be an opening. Uh, Jennifer, will you reduce that to writing? Just a short letter to uh, to uh, the president of the village board, and, and then and then that'll move in the ordinary process for asking for uh, applications for the vacancy. I too will. Well, I miss you. Thank you very much for your service. <laughs> we'll just come and hang out and wait for pay, even though I don't want to do it, but we'll do that. <laughs> okay, all right. <laughs> I don't think you've been outside enough to release it. Yeah. <laughs> Anyways, all right. So uh, upon that, I would uh, make a motion for adjournment. Do I have a second? Second. All right. I move to adjourn, uh, Commissioner. Uh, and, and take a vote, Commissioner McKnight. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Bullock. Aye. Uh, Commissioner Moore. Aye. All right, Commissioner Anderson. Aye. All right, Commissioner Anderson. I think I heard an eye there, and um, and I, Commissioner Cole, who made the motion, also said aye. So the Shore Police Commission meeting ends at six fifty p.m. Um, and we'll look into our technical issues going forward. Thank you very much.